In today's video, we're continuing with and discussing our journey through the Capital Wasteland in Fallout 3. Last time, we left Vault 101, fleeing for our life, but also in search of our father who also fled the vault. We came across the city of Megaton, in which we found a man named Colin Moriarty. Colin told us information about our dad, which consisted of the fact that he went to the Galaxy News Radio headquarters in the downtown DC area. We journeyed there ourselves and fought through a variety of horrific and mutated beings. We also came across the Brotherhood of Steel, which turns out one of their bases is actually the GNR HQ. After defeating a plethora of super mutants and even a super mutant behemoth, we got to speak with the DJ, Three Dog. Three Dog promised to give us information about our dad if we helped to fix his radio broadcast, which currently can only be heard in the immediate area. We continue our adventure from here. We're still in the GNR building and want to ask Three Dog some follow up questions about the mission he gave us. What else can Three Dog do for you? We ask him where's the Washington Monument. Well, it's only the tallest thing left in the city. When you step out of the museum, take a good look across the mall. You can't miss it. Just be careful. There may still be a security barrier around it. We ask him about the best way to the museum. Head out the back door of GNR and take the collapsed car tunnel to the other side of DuPont. Then take the metro tunnels until you're there. Hey, be careful though. You'll have to find another way back because it's a one-way trip. We ask him if he knows anything helpful about the Museum of Technology. Ha! <laughs> Man's monument to his own demise. All the garbage they displayed in there is the reason half the world was blown to shit. That shithole is located just off the mall. You know, that huge space in the center of the city in front of the capital. Be careful, the whole place is swarming with super mutants. Finally, we ask him to tell us about this relay. Well, if you check out your radio, you can hear pretty good in this place. Get a few blocks away, still not too bad, maybe a little static. Step outside the city limits, and it's Snake City, nothing but hiss. With the relay back on, you'll hear GNR clearly in the whole Capital Wasteland area like it used to be. We tell him that we're gonna get going. Right on, right on, keep your radio tuned to GNR for the real gospel. It's now time to head for the Museum of Technology. As Three Dog mentioned, the best way to get there is through a series of metro stations that run beneath the surface. We leave through the back door of GNR and emerge back out into the wasteland. We're immediately thrown back into the fire as a group of feral ghouls is alerted to our presence. We shoot down the first one pretty quickly using vats and a well-placed headshot. Two more come running out of the rubble. We use vats and get another headshot off on one of them using the hunting rifle, killing it instantly. The third is a roamer, meaning it has more health than the standard feral ghoul. We're low on action points, so we can't use vats right away. We hit fire and miss all of our shots. Eventually, our action points regenerate and we place a few bullets into its head. From here, we secure the kill. We see that our marker is pointing us into the collapsed car tunnel, so we make our way inside. Down here, we come across more ghouls pretty much right away. We shoot down one and decide not to instigate a fight with the other. We move along and go through a door that brings us into the DuPont Circle Station. Here, we enter into a room that contains a security terminal. Successfully hacking into it, we're able to activate the Metro Protectron. The robot leads the way for us and initiates a fight with two super mutants present in the next room. We help shoot down one and the other we take down using bats. During the commotion, we ended up attacking the Protectron somehow, so we had to shoot it down as well. We make our way further into the subway system and happen across a raider this time. A firefight breaks out and using vats, we get one good shot off, causing the raider to flee the scene. We follow and come across a separate raider, meaning there are definitely more to come. We one shot her in the head and loot her small outpost, finding medical supplies as well as some more ammo for our hunting rifle. We also find some drugs that can be sold for a nice price. Once we're done looting, we descend further into the tunnels and get caught up in a well-guarded area. There are turrets firing at us through some windows, as well as a group of raiders making their way up to our location. We fall back to the high ground of some stairs and begin firing away. Our first shot kills the raider instantly, meaning they were likely the wounded foe from before who fled. We two-tap the next raider, getting a well-placed headshot. The third raider we meet at the bottom of the stairs. We enter into vats and miss our first shot, but 
get a clean second shot in the head, killing her instantly. We loot their bodies and find unique weapons which we haven't seen before, like Chinese pistols that take 10mm rounds. We're ready to progress further but get held down by the turrets. There's a terminal we can hack which might help us but it requires a science skill of 50 which we don't have. Our best strategy was to stick our heads out for a few seconds and fire at them using the hunting rifle. It took about 3 landed shots to destroy the first Mark 1 turret and about the same for the second as well. Once they were destroyed, we were free to move along towards our destination. We saw a raider at the bottom of the platform glitching out so we fired one shot to put them out of their misery. Leveling up, we assigned our skill points accordingly, putting a little bit into energy weapons as we now have a laser pistol in our inventory and putting the rest into our big three. As for our perks, we selected educated as that gives us three more skill points every time we level up and, as suggested, it's best taken early on. Moving along, we come into a tunnel that's full of dead ghouls. Curious, we look around and see that there are actually frag mines on the ground. These are extremely deadly if left unchecked, but fortunately, they're easy to disarm and even easier to add into our inventory. We slowly approached each mine and interacted with them before they could explode. The mines begin beeping frantically, and that's how we know that the timer has started before we get blown to bits. We make our way into Metro Central and face off against more raiders. We hear some commotion on the other side, presumably the bandits facing off against ghouls, when, all of a sudden, the door opens and we're met with a firing squad. We get a few shots off, but both of them are using fully automatic weapons, which is rapidly depleting our health. Just in time, a feral ghoul shows up and distracts one of the raiders as we shoot and kill the other. We heal ourselves with a few stim packs and nuka colas and then shoot down the feral ghoul. Finally, we go into vats and blow off the second raider's head. We do some more looting around this room, taking the weapons and ammo of our fallen foes as well as cracking into ammunition crates and then we move along into another section of the subway tunnels. Immediately, we face off against two ghouls. The first one goes down quickly, and the second one does a completely badass maneuver of knocking a barrel into the air, blocking our headshot attempt, and then lunging in for the attack. However, shortly after, we end up shooting it down and moving along. We end up in an open area and defeat two more ghouls rather quickly. A little further along into the tunnels and we come across a pack of vicious dogs. They don't hit super hard nor do they have a lot of health, but given their speed and numbers, they do take a little bit of time and bullets to kill. Our shots attract more ghouls from the depths of the tunnels and using a combination of vats and point blank shooting, we kill them off as well. At this point, we've used our last .32 bullets and switch over to the 10mm pistol. We move along some more and go through a door that leads us to the museum station. Here, we face off against a roamer, which takes quite a few shots to take down, but does die before it can hit us. We activate a set of doors that leads us to the next room. Here, a raider slowly makes her way down the steps, but we get the jump on her and rapid fire with our pistol. Making our way back out into a set of tunnels, we make a grave error by aggroing two raiders. Both of them have fully automatic weapons, and to make matters worse, we accidentally press the caps lock button instead of tab in an attempt to quickly heal ourselves. This resulted in our character dying. So reloading and getting to the same point, we approach slowly and stick our heads out. This time, we get the jump on one of the raiders and fire at him with an assault rifle. We make our way to the next raider, go into vats, and blow their head off. A third raider runs from around the corner, and we use the last of our 5.56mm ammo on them. Fortunately, we loot them as well as their temporary setup, and find some ammunition for us to reload with. We do once again switch back to the 10mm in order to save our heavier weapons for riskier situations. We make our way out of the tunnels and ascend to a platform which ultimately leads us back out into the wasteland. We stick our heads out for a second and instantly get aggroed by a super mutant. We see that the Brotherhood definitely wasn't lying and that DC is crawling with them. The mutant chucks a grenade into our area causing us to flee from our cover. We stare them down and unload an entire magazine of bullets into its head, killing it. Just as we thought we were scot-free, a vast amount of bullets are fired at us. 
we managed to run and take cover behind a small corner up against a building, which, conveniently, is the one we need to go inside of. We're held down by a minigun which is being fired by a super mutant brute, which is worse because they take more shots to kill. We switch over to the hunting rifle and get a few headshots in, however, this really doesn't do too much. We stay resilient and continue to fire off bullets aimed at its head, all the meanwhile taking whatever damage comes from the minigun. Eventually, we kill it, loot the minigun, and enter inside of the Museum of Technology. Right away, we're noticed by another super mutant. All of our commotion from shooting back and forth brings a second one to join in on the fight. We run out of ammo for our hunting rifle and switch over to the assault rifle. We survive the encounter and kill both mutants, but run out of ammo for a few of our guns. Lucky for us, most of the super mutants use hunting rifles themselves, so for this mission, we'll be consistently cycling through .32 rounds. We make our way upstairs and end up on a tour for a demo vault. We see blood and debris lining the walls and floors. All the meanwhile, the lights and voiceover are overwhelming to our eyes and ears. We make sure to look over our shoulder as well as peek around the corners as we're unsure of when we'll come across the next super mutant. Soon, we make it out of the tour and find ourselves standing atop an overlook. Behind us is a door to the west wing of the building, which we go through. We end up in a big room separated by destruction and debris. On the other side of some rubble is the dish that Three Dog needs for his radio station. However, there's no direct route to get there, so we have to pick either the pathway downstairs or up here. We choose up here and come across multiple super mutants stationed on the stairs. They light us up, forcing us to fall back into the hallway. The first one comes out and, with the help of Vats, we kill it pretty quickly. The second one emerges from behind the wall and we're engaged in a firefight. We shoot it down just in time for the third mutant to round the corner. We run out of ammunition, again, for our hunting rifle and rapidly switch over to the 10mm. With just a few shots, we're able to kill it. We loot our fallen foes and pick up some .32 caliber bullets, allowing us to switch back to the hunting rifle. We make our way down the stairs and cautiously through some hallways. Eventually, we end up in a room facing the dish that we need to pick up. Guarding it is two more super mutants, one of them being a brute. Thinking quickly, we take out the minigun and lay into the brute. We get it down to about a quarter of its health and then switch over to the hunting rifle to finish it off. We go into vats and the first headshot does the trick. As its corpse drops to the floor, the second super mutant is there to take its place. We go into vats to fire off two more shots, but that only gets its health down by about half. The super mutant tries to pick up its fallen comrade's assault rifle, but we fire a few rounds in its face. Before it can start shooting at us, we seal the deal and kill the mutant. We approach the lunar lander and activate the Virgo 2 communications dish. We take it and add it into our inventory. It's now time to leave the Museum of Technology. We can either leave the way we came, which is lengthy, but we know there are no more enemies, or we attempt to use a shortcut and go through the planetarium. We choose the latter, which happens to be a mistake, as the exhibit activates and draws in two more super mutants. We quickly dispose of them and then leave through the way we came in, going back into the first zone, jumping off of the upper landing, and exiting back out into the wasteland. Our next stop is the Washington Monument. It's relatively close to the Museum of Technology. We took precautions and stayed tight to the buildings in case there were any more super mutants in our path. We saw a whole bunch patrolling the central area of this DC block, but we were far away enough to where they didn't notice us. Approaching the monument, we had a quick sigh of relief to see that the Brotherhood of Steel were the ones to occupy it. We approach the security terminal on the wall and open the reinforced doors in order to gain entrance inside of the tower. From here, we called an elevator and took it all the way up to the top floor. Arriving, we looted everything that we could and then interacted with the Galaxy News Radio Relay. It gave us the option to install the Virgo dish and then activate it, which we did. We got a quest update and saw the installation of the dish, which meant we were free to now go back to 3Dog and inquire further about our dad. We opened our map, fast traveled back to the GNR building, and spoke with the DJ. Hey, all right! The hero of the wasteland returns. We tell him we were glad to help with the good fight. Hey, you're the one that deserves all the thanks. You struck a major blow against tyranny. 
Now, GNR can be heard clear across the Capital Wasteland again. That'll give Eden and those muties something to think about. But before I get back to my calling, I bet you want to hear about your dad. We ask him where he went off to. When your dad passed through here, he and I talked for a good long time. He's a real stand-up kind of guy. He mentioned some scientific mumbo-jumbo, which didn't make sense to me. I mentioned something called Project Purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. Then he left in a hurry. We ask where Rivet City is. You never heard of Rivet City? Wow. Just... Wow. Well, a whole bunch of people got together and turned a beached aircraft carrier into a town. Pretty cool, huh? Just follow the river south from here. There's no way you can miss it. We ask him how things are now that the power's back on. I can't even tell you the love I'm getting from the wasteland. Ever since G and I started singing again, the guys downstairs told me that more people than ever are tuning in. It's all I ever wanted. Before we go, we ask Three Dog what his story is. Three Dog's seen it all. The capital wasteland at its ugliest. People killed for scraps of food, wounded children wandering aimlessly, some seriously fucked up shit. If it wasn't for the good fight, I think I would have gone crazy by now. We criticize him by asking him what he knows about fighting. You've got to understand, if I die, so does the voice of the people. I can't take that risk. Your idea of saving the world means combing through the rubble and using a gun. I use my voice. We're two sides of the same coin. If you think always being a target of your enemies is safe, then you got a funny way of looking at things. We asked Three Dog about his parents. Parents? Ha! I was born from the sun and have sand in my veins. Ha <laughs> ha! Just messing with you. My parents were very cool. They preached all about the haters and their bullshit, how to tell the propaganda from the real deal. We ask him why bother with GNR. Why candy coat the news when the world is in danger? People like the Enclave would have you believe everything is calm and totally under control. They're lying. Hell, President Eaton goes around spreading peace, love, and government, but no one even knows how old that Enclave signal really is. People need to hear the truth. It's a harsh world. We've got to work together to make it better. Not wait for Uncle Sam to ride in and save the day. We exit the conversation. Anytime you need a place to crash, duck in here. Be glad to provide. Exiting the conversation, we leveled up and assigned a total of 22 skill points thanks to the educated perk. We then picked the perk of intense training in order to add an extra skill point to agility as our aim with small guns isn't so great at the moment. After speaking with Three Dog, we hear we need to head to Rivet City, which is in the southeast corner of our map. We leave the GNR building and decide to see if we can take a shortcut by traveling around the Museum of Technology and all of the buildings that line the shoreline. We had to make our way through an absolute war zone, as raiders and super mutants were engaged in a deadly firefight. Bombs were exploding and shots were landing all over the place. We made it to a safe zone, but unfortunately there was no pathway over the rubble or through the buildings that we could find here, so we decided to just travel to Farragut Station and follow the river as suggested by Three Dog. We hugged the roads lining the riverbank and followed them south. Pretty quickly into our trek, we ran into some hired mercenaries. Well now, if it isn't the little saint from the vault. We've been looking for you. Someone's put quite a price on your head. What? You think you can walk around the wasteland doing the things that you do and there isn't going to be someone who takes notice? Such a shame. I hear that you could have been something useful. Ah well, time to die. We ask if this is something we can talk about. Ha <laughs> ha! No, no, I don't think so. The three Talon Company mercs chased us to the bottom of the steps. We hid behind a tree and tried to keep out of their line of fire until we were able to run up the stairs of the Anchorage Memorial and take advantage of the high ground. Across the inlet, a couple of grotesque creatures called centaurs were hurling some form of bodily fluid at the mercenaries, which distracted their attention from us. We fired off a few shots, but it was just too tricky and time consuming to single out each individual member. 
So, we pulled out a frag grenade and lobbed it at the merc to the far left. In a flash, it exploded and set off a chain reaction from some vehicles around it, sending them into blazes of glory as well, killing off all of the Talon Company goons instantly. We looted what was left of their bodies and then continued on our journey. We soon ran into an encampment of raiders. They weren't too difficult to fight off as we had some ammo for our hunting rifle and they came at us one at a time, allowing us ample time to deal with each individual raider. Looting them and their settlement, we moved on to find a scavenger underneath a bridge. Hey there. A few odds and ends. She was friendly and we were able to dump some of our items off on her as well as pick up some more ammo for our weapons. Sometime after that, we faced off against some centaurs up close. They're disgusting mutated creatures who were likely once humans. They have several hands and arms for legs and feet and their body is built more like an insect's. Their faces are deformed and they have tentacle-like tongues swinging from around their mouth. We kill the first one and approach the second. It's here we get caught up in a trap as there are a few super mutants posted on the inside of a destroyed building. They shoot at us with a minigun and a hunting rifle, pinning us down where we are. Our 10mm pistol doesn't do that much damage to the brute, nor does it really have the accuracy. As well, we don't have the ammo to spare on our bigger guns, so we devise a plan of waiting for the centaur to approach us. We kill it and then wait for a break in the minigun's fire to run across the opening to the other side. We take some hits while doing so, but we made it through safely. I don't like backing away from a fight in this game, but in this instance, it didn't seem like it was worth it to fire back. Once we were through that area, we made our way further along the road and ended up outside of the Jefferson Memorial. There were quite a few super mutants here too. Some of them were wielding hunting rifles, while others were swinging away at us with nail boards. We decided to save our hunting rifle ammo and shoot at them with the 10mm pistol. It took longer to kill them, but it felt good knowing we were preserving our ammo for our better guns. Eventually, we leave the site of the Jefferson Memorial and see a massive battleship in the distance, aka Rivet City. We approach and put our weapon away as we know we're likely safe here. We ascend some stairs and speak with the intercom. Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Making our way across, we're interrogated by the head of security, a man named Harkness. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. We tell him we're looking for Dr. Lee. Yeah? Let me guess. No, she's not expecting you. But it's really important, and you need to see her right away. Been a lot of that going around lately, and I've had just about enough of it. So you're going to have to do better than that. We try to outsmart him, so we say we're here to ask her about hydroponics. Uh, what? I don't know much about her work. You'll have to ask her about that, I guess. She's probably in the science lab. Just keep out of trouble on my boat. We tell him thanks for the help. Carry on, then. With that out of the way, we can officially make our way into Rivet City, speak with Dr. Lee, and hopefully find our father. <laughs> 